This week, we are going to focus on stress. Now, <laughs> appropriately enough. Appropriate. Stress is a topic that we have covered many times on the podcast. However, I well, we've never we've, covered it. Uh, right. We've, we've, we've mentioned it in different capacities, right. but we've never really focused on it uh, like we have some other, like depression and bipolar right. disorder and things like that. Yeah, we did some week long focus. Um, podcasts mm -hmm. where we talked about a specific disorder, a mm -hmm. specific issue, um, and and in those uh, we talk about stress. We've talked about stress many times. Right. We've never focused on it, and uh, the reason we are now is because there was a recent study, which sort of um, it was like a, a a call, you know, to us. There was a study done by the American Psychological Association. In mm -hmm. fact, there were two studies reported: uh, one by the American Psychological Association, which reports. Uh, the results of a survey done in 2017 mm -hmm. it, that was reported. It you know it takes a while to analyze the data and everything. It was reported in 2018, but the survey was conducted in 2017 right. about the um, the uptick, the increase in stress levels. Um, the APA study was in America, mm -hmm. but there was a second study that was reported that was international. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. The, uh, so, mm -hmm. so in essence, the, the, these studies found that there have been significant increases in stress over the past year, two years. Uh, right, and they said, they said they compared it to data that was collected in 2005, mm -hmm. and, and that's when they've, they've noticed this gradual increase, mm -hmm. and 2017 was the highest yet. Now, we haven't analyzed the data from 2018, right. but presumably it's similar. Right, and, and according to some of the survey, um, it suggests that it will be. Right, that's right. So, mm -hmm. um, so there's a couple of articles linked in the show notes. One is to uh, one from Time.com, right. Time Magazine. Mm -hmm. com, um, and that is the one that's focusing on the United States and uh, you know 2018 um, US and survey. stress. And, and the other is from the New York Times, and it's mm -hmm. focusing and it talks about the 2017 study. The international, the international study, right. study mm -hmm. from 2017. Yeah. So, uh, which you, which would you like to start with? Uh, let's do the APA one. F let's do the APA one first. Okay. Right. It's the the one from the United States. Okay. So mm -hmm. this was from Time Magazine, um, or Time dot com, and what what the results of this study suggest mm -hmm. is that not only do we have a significant increase in stress um, among Americans in general. Right. But there, there's one particular stressor that seems to be yeah. of primary concern. And it, interestingly, and, and we didn't know this going into it, interestingly though, it is somewhat related to what we talked about last week. Exactly. That, that was the first connection I made. I said, yeah. This is the kind of stuff we were discussing last week. Yeah. Right. Last week mm -hmm. we were talking about the us versus them right. and, and some of the divisiveness that we're seeing here and, and some of the psychological consequences of that. Well, one of those psychological consequences is stress. And right. sure enough, this APA study found that over 50% of Americans report that their primary stressor right. is, in fact, the state of the United States. Right. It used to be things like money. Right. Uh, in fact, money and work are close second and third. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but 63% right. of the respondents, and the respondents, uh, they, they um, had th almost... 3,500 people complete mm -hmm. the um, um, yeah. complete the survey. Uh, I think 3,450 or something like that, which is a pretty large number. It's it's a, a fraction of the whole country, of course, mm -hmm. about one percent. I think we have 300 million people in the country. Like so, um, but it's still a, a large data set mm -hmm. that takes a while to analyze, and I don't I don't know exactly how many questions they had to analyze. But anyway. The result was that 63% of those who completed the survey said that their number one stressor was the future of the nation. Mm -hmm. um, there's something going on, and we right. talked about it um, last week when we talked about tribalism mm -hmm. and divisiveness, and um, and of course there are things going on internationally as well, you mm -hmm. know, that that create stress. But 63% are concerned about the future of the nation. Right. I know I am. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether, I guess I'm part of that 63%. Sure. That makes sense that we would be. So. Right. So the way that they conducted the study seems to be, and in, in, in the Time Magazine article, they didn't really go into the methodology of the study, but right. what they seem to have done is they've listed multiple sources of stress. Right. Uh, one is the state of the United States, one is, you know, uh, money and, and job and, um, right. and, and, mm -hmm. thing, and so on. And 
people were to rate it basically on a Likert scale right. of um, presumably not at all stressed to um, very stressed or uh, mm -hmm. extremely stressed. Right. And you, everyone was to rate each of these items on that Likert scale. And yeah, 63% yeah, rated um, the, the future of the United States as either very concerning mm -hmm. um, or somewhat concerning. Right. And then second and third, as you said, was uh, money, finance, money, money was second, and work. And work was third. Um, and they were right. close, second yeah, and third. 63% 60, for right. the United States, 62% uh, for uh, money. money, and 61% for uh, work. work. So very, very close. Right, right. But still. And somewhat to, related to each other. Right, but, to, but to put that first. Right. Uh, so then, then the other thing they did in this survey is they talked, well, what specifically are you concerned about? Right. Okay. And again, we talked about this last week, 43% said healthcare, mm -hmm. okay? And that is not surprising at all. Right. Healthcare, I don't, know, I don't know whether it's, we're more aware of it because we are healthcare providers mm -hmm. and you know, we're insurance, right. we're, we're, we're uh, in, involved with the insurance companies. Right. I don't know whether it's because I've become more aware of it because of, my, because of being in a practice, but people are talking about healthcare and insurance costs and what's covered and what's right. not covered. Um, and so 43% said that they're concerned about health care in this country. Mm -hmm. um, and that's understandable because as a, a, you know, you and I both have families and, mm -hmm. you know, they have right. health concerns. You know, there's dentists and doctors and yeah. psychologists that you want to engage. But health care is a, is a big issue for 43% of Americans. That's right. specifically one of the things they're worried about, the future of health care in our country. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and, and other things include like the, the economy. Right. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and again, other things that relate to uh, money and, and work and, and some of those kinds of right. uh, issues that, of course, make up second and third place mm -hmm. in this list. So, right. The, you know, what's, what was interesting is that um, we 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 wonder we um, we worry about uh, how much do people worry about terrorism? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think we're still all very concerned about that because right. it's in the news. Um, there's terrorism, there's crime, there are hate crimes, there's anger. You know, this, the people seem to be um, um, antagonistic toward each other. So the whole issue of crimes and hate crimes and all that. But that was only thirty percent. Mm -hmm. I, I say only. <clears throat> it's small in comparison to an issue like health care. Right. So the, the larger issues are public policy issues. Right. You know, they're not, it's not crime and all that. And that makes sense because when we talk about problems in schools, school, the problems are not violence and aggression. The problems are cell phone use right. and bullying and that sort of uh, uh, public displays of affection and uh, out of uniform and haircuts right. and all that. It's these minor problems that are, that are creating about 95% 90 of the discipline problems in schools. Right. So here again, we see the same thing that what, what you might think is, are the real concerns like crime and terrorism, they're not. What's a real concern to Americans and a source of their stress are things like healthcare. And what's of particular concern to us because of being in um, healthcare providers, but also you know working with people to help them manage stress, um, it is the fact that in this survey, 45% of people reported that they uh, lie awake at night, yeah. concerned and, and and stressed over or distressed over their these these concerns and issues. Yeah, it's not insignificant, right? I mean, this is keeping people awake, right? You know, so yeah, and, and and you know uh, the. Um, other interesting thing, and this would be uh, perhaps uh, fuel for another podcast um, in, in the future at some point, is the, the fact that while people, the majority of people want to be informed, um, mm -hmm. I said about 56% of people want to stay informed and want to know what's going on, right. over 70% are concerned that the media that from which they get the information right. blows things out of proportion. I worry about that, and I don't know what you're right. It may be something we want to talk about is yeah. what is the effect of, of media because now that you have these 24-hour news channels, they have to do something and they right. have to keep people engaged. I mean, there was a time not long ago when you had maybe a half hour or an hour mm -hmm. out of 24 hours where you would get this news. Right. They had 23 hours to recover. Mm -hmm. Now, it's, it is literally around-the-clock coverage. Exactly. And in order to keep you engaged, they have to sensationalize things. Mm -hmm. And so you're always being aroused and engaged right. uh, by the news. It doesn't right. matter what program you watch. It's not a 
it's not a liberal versus a conservative or th that doesn't matter. It's right. just that everybody has to sensationalize because that's what keeps you engaged. Exactly, you know, exactly. So. so now in the 2017, yes. uh, in the article mm -hmm. about the 2017 survey, right. uh, that too was interesting because it, but it was an international study. Yeah, in this one there were almost a hundred and there were a hundred and fifty four hundred and fifty four thousand respondents right. to the international questionnaire. And um, there were from a hundred and forty five countries. So Which is this not is a massive undertaking. Yeah. And I'm thinking, how did these researchers put this together? Mm -hmm. you know, it, it's a ma I mean, you think, well that's not that many. Yeah, it is. I right. mean if you're a researcher, hundred and forty five countries is a lot of work for right. somebody. Well and you're talking I mean even from just the, the, the basic interpreting, uh, uh, translating right. yeah. the, the questions in right. a meaningful way. Mm -hmm. um, That's know. right, you have a, over a hundred different languages. Right. Okay? And then the questions have to be understood the same way regardless right. of how they're translated, right. you know, which is not, not an easy yeah, problem to solve. It's not just a, a, a word for word translation, it's no. a con contextual and, right. and meaningful. That's right, semantic and cultural and all these differences. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing is, how do you select the, the, the 150,000? Right. Well, I'm going to assume, because it was done by a reputable organization, that it was a random sample, right. you know, which is another issue, but uh, that they were carefully selected. They mm -hmm. didn't just go to one place and right. pick one, you know, they, right. they did, a, they did an, an array of uh, respondents so that you get a more accurate picture. Right. But 154,000 is a lot of interviewing. That's a lot of interviewing. Right. That's a lot of information. Right. And, and they found that 2017, mm -hmm. uh, for the year of 2017, it was a year of distress uh, right. around the world. Around the world. Uh, because of humanitarian concerns, because mm -hmm. of war, because of all kinds of uh, particular factors. Right. But it was a year that really w was really marked. Um, in the increase in stress and, right. and humanitarian based issues. Right, and, and again, if we, we uh, think about the news for a moment, you think about things like, uh, you hear stories, you, you uh, see stories on, on TV about genocide, about famine, right. about drought, about um, family separations, about mm -hmm. people drowning as they try to escape right. uh, countries, um, war-torn countries, and we hear about wars and cities being bombed. But when you think, when you put it all together, which is what this survey did, um, you get this very clear impression that 2017 was a rough year for humanity. That's the title mm -hmm. of the second article. Yeah. 2017 was tough for humanity. There are huge problems in our world that, mm -hmm. that need to be solved. And it, it feels like countries aren't solving the problems. You know, and I, I think Syria is a good example um, where mm -hmm. they've, been, they've been fighting each other now for how many years? Right. Like four or five years. And all it is, nobody seems to have a solution. Right. You know, the United States is involved, Russia is involved, uh, uh, the, the leader of Syria keeps bombing cities and killing people, and there doesn't seem to be a solution. It, it, the Israeli-Palestinian problem, there doesn't seem to be a solution. You know? right. So that create when, you're, when you feel impotent, when you feel that you mm -hmm. don't have any control or that nobody has any control, um, it creates stress. Right. Okay? The other half of this survey, did you see the other, I mean, there's a whole article about it, a whole separate articles. What nation is the happiest? Yeah. Happiness, of course, in quotes. Right, L loosely speaking. Right. We don't and, know. Right, we don't know what happiness means. Right. You know. But if you want to be happy, <laughs> there's an article that says, if you want to be happy, try Finland. You know. Right, you could try Finland for happiness, you could try Finland for good <laughs> education system. Good health care. Finland just seems to be the place to be. Right. But the happiest, the number one, we like to rank things in this country, the number one nation in the world for happiness is Norway, mm -hmm. which is right next to Finland. So there's right. something, you know, you think about... Scandinavian countries. You know, it makes me think about um, light therapy, mm -hmm. you know, where yeah. th um, the Scandinavian countries have those uh, months of darkness and um, they're serious and, and sad and you know seasonal affect of disorder and all that stuff. But as it turns out, those Scandinavian countries um, are the happiest. Why? I have no idea. Right. It might be that they're homogeneous. Right. It might be that, they're, I don't know. We don't, right. we don't know why, we have to find out. Number 14 on the list is the United States. Number 14. So we're number 14. So again, I don't know how they're measuring happiness in these surveys, right. and, but it doesn't make me, some people go, well, you know, 
some of my patriotic friends would say, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. This is that, you know. That's well, not- well, presumably, there was a question on the, on the survey that said, are you happy? Right. And <laughs> more people said yes in some of these other in Norway, countries than said, said yeah. yes. So, so they ranked the countries according to how, how people responded. And, yeah. and the United, we, we voted, we rated yeah. ourselves in a way. Right. You know, at least the people who were surveyed rated themselves. And so we came out number 14. Norway is first. We're number 14. I don't know what is between those two. But right. um, it, it gives you pause. What these, what these did for us is it, it, it gave us pause to say, wow, these are fairly important numbers right. and they make you pause and say what just what is going on right but we know that there's been a significant statistically significant increase in stress worldwide and in the United States right mm-hmm. yeah absolutely so, so we'll talk uh, about that more as we go through the week right that's right you promise right. I promise okay all right. all right now before we let you go today uh, we do want to make an announcement, and we'll oh, have yes, some more information right. over the next couple of days. But um, we we encourage you to check out the first mental health bloggers conference uh, that will be held actually in London. So those of you I wish we could in the United that, States, but um, we can't go to that, can we? Well, we could. No, but I mean, we can't. Yeah. I mean, it's no. So what are we going to do instead? So instead, we're going to host a live. Uh, podcast. I'm so excited. That's going about to this. be that's going to be broadcast live at the conference, but also live for everyone else on through YouTube. So they're going to have this conference in London, and we're going to be beamed in. That's right. We're. We'll I'm so there. excited. We, we, about we this. will be uh, virtually. That's present. right. No, that's really cool because it's like like we're at the Academy Awards, <laughs> and we right. can't be there, but we're going to be on screen. That's right. We're, we'll have that whole little speech am, in now. We're sorry so, that we can't be there today. I'm excited about it, but. To the conference organizers, I am um, very pleased, very proud uh, that we're going to be there yeah. um, uh, and be able to participate in the conference. And we really appreciate your confidence and, and your invitation. Yeah, so uh, it's, it. it's co-sponsored by uh, PsychReg, yeah. who uh, our we, friends at PsychReg, and we do uh, the, our podcast with, uh, but also with uh, Get Psyched, which is right. our friend, um, our good friend, Fraser, Fraser Smith. Fraser Smith. Um, who we've uh, interviewed and had on the podcast a number of times and who, uh, who we're very uh, eager to have on the podcast again uh, to talk about a variety of yeah. topics. But he's, uh, his, his Get Sight podcast and uh, YouTube channel uh, is co-sponsoring this event. Right. Yeah, if, you got, if you've never looked up Fraser Smith, um, do yourself a favor, look mm-hmm. it up. He, yeah. He's really a first-rate um, psychologist. And he's very thoughtful very smart, right. very thoughtful, and very, very active. He has a wonderful right. um, website that, um, take a look at that, it's good stuff. Yeah. So, as a footnote, yeah. as a footnote to this conference, mm-hmm. I'm keeping abreast of everything through um, Twitter and WhatsApp. Yeah. And I'm, I'm about, I, I actually sent a message to Fraser the other day on WhatsApp, and I, well, we we're sending one to our friends in, in London. Um, and I'm doing it with Twitter, and we stop laughing. <laughs> he can't contain himself. No, I'm. The learning curve is a little, not flat, but it's it's going in the right direction. It's not negative. Well, it's not zero. That's true. You know, for a long time I wasn't allowed to have either one of those things. Now I'm allowed to have them, and I'm saying I'm about halfway there with Twitter. I I, I know. Uh, my mastery is about 50% right now, and I know that's an F, but I'm getting there, so um, I can, I'm doing this now through Twitter. Fantastic. You didn't know that, because I didn't have to go to you and say, hey, Bernie, what, what button do I push? It doesn't make me want to know who you asked. <laughs> I don't know. I'm assuming it went to Fraser Smith. It hasn't <laughs> it responded. Have, it may have gone to someplace in Alaska or something. I don't know, but, but I am becoming uh, Twitter and WhatsApp savvy, so... Just that's a footnote to the conference because I can keep up with this now. See, I'm hearing about this stuff. See, it's good stuff. Well, it's not good stuff because it takes too. That's another topic. Yeah. Okay. Though uh, I will say that Dr. <laughs> Marshall has been in a group chat for the past couple of days on WhatsApp that he has not yet read any of the uh, messages. Really? Or yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, I said I'm about halfway there. Okay. You check it once a week or so. I was okay. You brought it up. 
the problem is it takes so much time to keep up with this stuff. And mm -hmm. I said that at the beginning that mm -hmm. when I started to get all these Twitter, I thought, I don't have time to be doing all this stuff with technology. Then I realized that's what my children are doing. Mm -hmm. They're, they are responding, <laughs> including this child. Um, it takes a lot of time to keep up with this stuff. It does. And that's what I resent. Because I don't, I don't resent. Want, I don't want to spend that much time on these devices. I don't want to go home in the afternoon and have to stay on there and answer. I don't mean to be rude to my friends, but I don't like to spend time on these devices. I know. I forgive you for that. I think that's all for today. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I'm going to talk about this in detail someday about how much time it takes to do Twitter and WhatsApp and email and texting and all the other things that we have to do. Instagram, Snapchat. I checked my Snapchat a couple months ago. Yeah. Well, we'll just say that the, the first Mental Health Bloggers Conference will, be, will take place on uh, December 17th uh, of this year. This year? Um, and just so uh, keep an eye out. We'll, we'll put a link in the show notes to the uh, website uh, announcing it, and you can read about the different presenters and what all will be happening at the conference in the event that you're interested in and have the availability to get there. We would encourage you to do that. Right. So, Ms. Right. Ca Ms. Cassie would know how many days there are between now and the conference. She probably would. She keeps track of that stuff in December. That's true. Okay. Thank so, you. All right. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid. Mm -hmm.